Hi, and welcome to Great Getaways. A gem is known as something precious, something prized, especially for its great beauty or perfection. And because a gem has many facets, it's the perfect word to describe Ludington. We prized our visit to this town along Lake Michigan Circle Tour and hope you enjoy its beautiful, perfect beaches, delightful downtown, historic sites, and lighthouses. In fact, the lighthouses offer sparkling Lake Michigan views that are some of the most recognized with spectacular sunsets as their backdrops. For the first facet of our tour, we met with Kathy McLean along the Ludington Waterfront Park on the Waterfront Walkway. Kathy is the CEO President at the Ludington and Scottsville Area Chamber of Commerce, and she describes what a gym the park is for residents and visitors alike. I think probably the best thing is, is it's right near our downtown, so you can walk from downtown or walk from here to downtown. And, and you've got a lot down there too, I mean there's restaurants, motels nearby, everything. Oh, it's, we're, our downtown continues to be more and more vibrant. It, the things that are happening that we've worked for for so long, you know, you want people to be walking around your downtown, riding bikes around downtown, sitting outside, and uh, you know, on the outside dining, and you know, we've got live entertainment and you know, the great restaurants, great shops, locally owned people that are passionate about being here. You know, we've had a lot of um, people retire and um, kind of have a second career where they want to always wanted to. My husband opened a bike shop. <laughs> Unique things. You know, too, one of the things that I found, uh, it doesn't seem to matter what time you're going through town, there's people out on their bikes, there's people out walking, a safe town to be in. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's a, a really, we get comments all the time from people that love how friendly our downtown is, but also it's that small town um, atmosphere that I think people really love coming here for. It's that feeling of they're kind of getting away. Okay. And, a lot of different restaurants. I mean, there's a lot of fine dining as well as just the, the normal everyday uh, fast food places yeah, too. So. Yeah, yeah. We even as locals, we're more and more excited about the restaurants that are opening. You know, we've we've had the brew pub for a long time now, and and it's great. But we've also got some fine dining, like you said. We had a Thai restaurant that just opened recently, and so yeah, lots of variety. Really good barbecue downtown. We've got Q. Um, smokehouse and um, we just had a, a yogurt place open and so yeah lots of, lots of fun options and of course there's always House of Flavors which is the kind of a, a staple. Yeah and that they actually make ice cream for all the course Yes they do yes. So yeah. it's kind of a unique place. Yeah and... it's really cool to have the factory right downtown and then the restaurant right in front there and fresh ice cream. <laughs> now when I was in town the other day I seen the big boat the Badger sitting down there. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the Badger is really an icon for our community, and it's, you know, we call it our boat, but it's, we're so fortunate to have it here, and literally as a, you know, tourism, it, it dumps hundreds of people on our, you know, right in our downtown twice a day. Wow. And it, only during a certain part of the time, and then the rest of the time, it's once a day, but half of it, yeah. Okay, now we're standing right on one of the piers they go out, there's a lighthouse that's out of sight of us now. There's actually several lighthouses in the area. Yeah, And yeah. people love lighthouses. They'll yes, come here they just do. to visit those two. And most of them are open, I believe. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Both of our lighthouses are open and um, we're in, in easily accessible. This one a little bit more than the one out of the state park. It's a little bit of a walk. The Big Salvo Point Lighthouse stands proudly at the tip that juts out into Lake Michigan within the Ludington State Park. The black and white striped tower is listed on both the state and national registries of historic places. You can tour the lighthouse daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. from early May to late October or visit the gift shop that is located in the original keeper's quarters. I've been a lighthouse keeper since 2008 here at Big Sobel. Um, I come every year because it's a fun working vacation. We work while we're here but we play when we're on our off hours. Uh, when we come in, we have the gift shop that we run. We have the video room where we teach the kids or people that come out here the education of the light, the history of the light. Uh, we also have to have somebody up at the top of the tower here because it's required by law, but we also have to make sure that people keep their feet on the black platform and not try to climb up or do things, do stupid things as we refer to it as. And unfortunately, we have had people who have done that. Uh, 
we run the cash register, we uh, stock the shelves, we keep the pop bottle or pop machine running, uh, we keep the candy stuff, and people are real grateful, especially when it's a really hot and humid day, so that they have something that they can drink or eat when they mm -hmm. get out here. Uh, we start at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, we open at 10, but we have to get the register and stuff ready to go in the morning. And then we close at 5, if we're lucky. We usually have somebody that has trudged all the way out here, the uh, 1.8 miles, I guess it is, from the campground. And they're like, we are leaving today. Can we? So we usually get them into the gift shop as quickly as possible so they can get what they need there. And then we let them come up in the tower because then we can check out while they're doing their tour through the tower up here. Okay. Uh, we live in the quarters downstairs. We get to, we are fortunate that we get to drive out here. We have a pass so that the people know. Ludington has so much to offer its residents and visitors, but our most popular draw is the 5,300 acres that lies just north of town, known as the Ludington State Park. The park opened on August 15, 1936 and is celebrating its 80th birthday in 2016. This wonderful area of land is not just for camping, it's a haven for hikers, fishermen, bikers and anyone who loves what nature has to offer. Here you'll discover sand dunes with spectacular views, hardwood forests, marshlands and nearly 7 miles of Lake Michigan shoreline. The park is a vacation within itself, with special programs offered in the summer. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but uh, I'm anxious to get out and see a little bit more of this. So, what do you say we go? Oh, let's do it. Of the three lighthouses in the Ludington area, the Ludington North Breakwater Light is not an official lighthouse, since the house has never been attached to it. As Ludington's focal point, it is a great place to watch the sunset or wave at the SS Badger Car Ferry as it cruises out into Lake Michigan. From the break wall leading out to the light, you can watch as people enjoy activities on the water or fishing from it. Both the structure and the history of the light are fascinating. You can tour the white pyramid-shaped tower from around Memorial Day to Labor Day. Originally, um, in 1914, they built this harbor, and it cost a million and a half bucks. And Ludington, uh, he went to Congress, and he did some politicking, and they contributed some money, and he, he put in the rest. He was the timber, it was a timber business here. Okay. And they were hauling train cars full of logs from this side over to Minnetowoc, and then they were driving down to Chicago and they were using the lumber down there. Um, so the ships that he had back then were, some were sailing ships, some were steamers, and they would get stuck in the harbor because of the silk would keep tilling when they were being built up. So he went down to, you know, he went to Congress. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> he, he went to Congress. Yeah, he went to Congress and, uh, you know, they, they finally uh, gave him some money. There are so many things to keep you interested and engaged while in downtown Ludington, including shopping, art galleries, and entertainment. But just outside of town, there are other attractions that you don't want to miss. We headed for the historic White Pine Village. We have another beautiful day here in Ludington. I have to tell you, not all the attractions are out here on the water. We're just south of town. We're actually on a sand bluff, although there's enough trees around. I can't see Lake Michigan. It is nearby. Uh, we're here at the historic White Pine Village. Now, this village is a bunch of restored buildings, about 25 of them, of what the history of this area was like back in the 1800s. The village is certainly a place where history lives. I'm with Rebecca right now. She's got us out here in the village. We're taking a look around. Hey, Rebecca, maybe you can tell us a little bit about it. Oh, yeah. This is Historic White Pine Village located in Ludington, Michigan. It's owned and operated by the Mason County Historical Society. There's about 29 different buildings on site. The crown jewel of the Historical Society of White Pine Village is the Mason County Courthouse. And the courthouse was built back in the 1840s. It's on its original location. The Historical Society purchased the property back in the 1970s. 
renovated the courthouse back to its original condition and have set up exhibits inside representing how the courthouse used to operate back in the day. And a lot of the other buildings that are on site are original buildings that have been um, transported here to preserve the history of Mason County in the western side of Michigan. And then there are some that are replicas of um, historical buildings in the area that as historians we wanted to, you know, represent and protect that history here. Okay, well, what time period are we covering here? This is the 1840s to about the 1950s. So it's about a hundred year time frame that we cover as you walk throughout the village. This village part that we're in right now is obviously the 1840s. We have our courthouse, our trapper's cabin, general store sort of a historic version of one-stop shopping, you know, back in the day where you got everything. And then as you go that way, you get into the 1950s. So this is the older section of the courthouse, or of the village. Okay. Now, uh, people come in, you get a little map. It's not not real big, but yeah. you got a little map. You can go out here and mm-hmm. kind of look the buildings over, and you've got information exactly. on what each building represents. Yeah, we give them a map, and we sort of go through the different key points of the village and what to look for, the fact that town hall has snacks and ice cream and different options that they can use. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours for the average visitor to get through the village, and some spend longer. It depends just how much families want to do. They're able to bring a picnic. It's a dog-friendly friendly location, so they can bring their dogs as well, come and go throughout the day. It's really a, an affordable way for families to bring you know, their kids out here and really see a part of history and what life used to be back in the day. You know, I, when we came into the building, kind of the little welcome center that mm-hmm. you have here, a little gift shop in there where you can get the information yeah. learn about the village. You also have a lot of books and things in there. What, what is that all about? So a lot of the books are local authors and historians in the area who have wrote different informations. We have, you know, the story of Ludington book. We have a Justice Stearns book that was wrote by one of our professors out of the community college. Justice Stearns really um, was one of the lumber barons back in the day, and so we've got some great books out there. We also, with our new Maritime Museum coming on board, we have our some books about the maritime history in Michigan as well. So, Why don't you give us a quick overview of the, the new yeah. museum that you The new Maritime Museum is the old Coast Guard Station in Ludington, Michigan, and the Historical Society in connection with the city um, are working to open a maritime museum that will preserve the history of the maritime air, you know, history for Western Michigan, primarily the Ludington area. It's going to have the logging um, industry, lumbering industry, car ferry history. It's really going to be state of the art. This will be we have great technology companies involved and contractors that are really going to have um, just a very interactive museum. We'll have a pilot house where kids will be able to go in and actually it'll look as if they're steering the Badger into oh. port wow. while they're coming in. So very there's cool. a lot of neat aspects of it. We're very excited about it and anticipating a May of 2017 opening. Okay, so, so it's a little bit in the future. A little yet. bit in the future. The history yeah. is a little bit in the future yeah. yet. Mm-hmm. I think I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're giving history a future. That's what we're doing. It's not hard to compare shopping in the 1800s with today. Can you imagine how many general stores would fit into a big box store today? Yet everything required for daily living and more was available at the general store. So now this is the general store. This is the Coles General Store. And the Coles General Store was lived in by Mr. and Mrs. Henry Cole. The Historical Society moved it onto this property back in 1975, so it was one of the first buildings that we brought onto the property. When this used to be called Pioneer Village when it first started. It's okay. since changed to Historic White Pine Village. This is a favorite building. We do history and action days where we bring students in from all over West. Love going into the store and seeing how it used to be back in the day. They got their goods and the fact that you bought everything from a bar of soap to you know a piece of fabric, a hat, you know, a, a cabbage shredder, whatever you needed, as well as all of your food. Just like all the cowboy movies, yeah, see, right? Exactly. Go to the general store, buy go it. to the general store, and get everything there. Rebecca, that was really interesting in there, yeah. all the different things. That, that, and, and it's such a little building, you have to buy all those things right in that spot. Yeah. What do you got in store for us next? Well, let's go over to the Trapper's Cabin. That is a favorite here as well. And that'll give you some history about how things were in the 1850s for trappers in the area. Oh, cool. say this. Let's go this way. Watch your step. There is an expression, all trappings of home. This solidly built, hand-hewed log cabin typifies the life of a trapper who built it. It is a testament to the skill and determination of the early settlers of the area. Oh, 
Okay, so this is the Trapper's Cabin, and this was owned by a William Kubia, and Mr. Kubia brought his family and four his wife and four kids up to the area in the 1850s, and they built this cabin, gave and his family lived in it, and it was also the first post office outpost for Mason County. No kidding. Yeah, so this cabin was located over in the Custer area of Mason County, and then it was eventually brought here to preserve that history and the trapping history of the Mason County area. Have you ever stood in a spot and wondered what life was like a hundred years ago? If you take the self-guided tour of this historic village, you will get to see and experience what life was like more than a hundred years ago in Mason County. There are 30 buildings and sites to explore. You and your entire family will leave feeling very nostalgic as well as educated in the life of our forefathers. Over here we have here we have our print shop. And that's another favorite in the area, but our crown jewel is the Mason County Courthouse. Over All right. Here. That's the one I wanted to see. Rebecca, we are out here. You promised to show me the crown jewel of your area here. And it's courthouse? And it the is courthouse. the courthouse. And yes. this is it here. This is it. This is the crown jewel of White Pine Village. This is the first Mason County Courthouse and the first framed home in Mason County. Burr Caswell built the home back in 1849. He, him and his wife moved into it. They had four children. She was actually Native American and her name was Hannah. About six years after living in it, they, he offered the first floor to the county for county government use. Ah. So him and his family moved to the upstairs level and then they operated a courthouse out of the bottom floor on one half and then the back half had a trading post and the county jail. <laughs> so all in the home. It, it's amazing yeah. how it was back then that Very so different. much was in such a small spot. Like Very that. small and this was its original location. So this courthouse is here. The Historical Society purchased it, built the village around it and it is our crown jewel, holds the historical marker with the state of Michigan. Another slice of Ludington's history is the Jamesport Brewery. It is located in the Victorian Jamesport Center, where in 1890 there were the Red Andrew Saloon and the Central House Hotel. This establishment largely served sailors of the Great Lakes during the booming days of logging in western Michigan. And you might guess there are some great brews waiting to be tasted. Boy, I love brew pubs. I got to tell you, there's a lot of them sprouting up. But you've been here for a while now. We have. We've been here since uh, uh, two, the year 2000. And when we started in business, there were probably 28 or 30 breweries in Michigan. Now there are over 100. And it's a, it's a really unique experience. Every community that you go into in Michigan where beer is served, they're all different. So you can travel all over Michigan and find a different style of beer everywhere. Now, how many differences have you got? Ones. Well, we generally have 12 brews on tap most of the time. Okay. We have seasonals, uh, which we only offer in the summer, and we have seasonals that we offer in the fall and winter. The seasonals uh, in the summertime include some of the fruit from the local area, like our, our blueberry wheat right here. We also have a peach wheat that we do, which is a, a new uh, seasonal that we're doing this year. Okay. And then in the wintertime, when we have uh, more capacity and we're not quite as busy in the winter, we can do the beers that, that take longer to uh, ferment. So you're actually brewing on location here then? We do. We have a full brew house uh, underneath the building and uh, it's a five barrel system and uh, produces all the, the beer we need. Okay. Do you do tours of it? We do. Anybody wants to ask us for uh, a tour, the, um, uh, we're certainly welcome to do it. Well, Tom, now that we've sampled the beer, do you want to see where we brew the beer? Oh, I'd love to see it. I'd All love right. to see it. One more drink, though, first. Okay, here we go. Mm. Perfect. That's, That's another good one. Before having a great meal at the Jamesport Brewery, treat yourself to a tour of the brewery and watch how the best beer in port is crafted. The head brewer completed a course at the Siebel Institute of Technology's World Brewing Academy and continues to brew the best for the customers. Well, Tom, uh, you know, we came in here, we're trying the beers, but I had to try some of those foods you've got, too, because I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. And I got the Cajun chicken sandwich. Boy, does this look good. It looks good. And it looks like you've got, what, a... So we've got, got some here? fresh lake perch here. Uh, it's one of our uh, favorite items on the menu. It's sweet and fresh. We have our brew house fries, and we're drinking a Kolsch beer with that today, mm -hmm. something you, a little bit lighter. You know, you mentioned uh, earlier that uh, you actually have some pairings that go on? Yes, we do. We uh, occasionally will have a, uh, a brewer's dinner, 
uh, usually in the fall or spring of the year, and we'll actually pair the food, we'll, we'll, we'll create menu items that gives our culinary staff a chance to shine, and they spend many months researching uh, what they're going to serve at that particular dinner, and then we pair the, the wines or, or the beers with the dinner, and then um, in some cases we actually incorporate the, the beer into the dinner itself. Okay, you mentioned beer and ice cream? Beer and ice cream, yeah. We had a, a winter festival here one time, and we, we uh, partnered with the local House of Flavors uh, manufacturing uh, that they do many varieties of ice cream. And we did, it took us a while to do the research, but we actually had beers that we paired with ice cream. It was a pretty tasty night, actually. Oh, I bet it was. It was unusual. <laughs> Imagine it was. It was. Yeah. And I can't look at this anymore without eating something, so I'm going to go ahead and start eating. Enjoy. <laughs> You will have to take a look at one more facet of Ludington, the sculptures of the waterfront park. The nine bronze sculptures are not only fascinating to look at, but each one tells a story that relates to Ludington's rich history. We're in downtown Ludington right now. We're at what they call our sculpture park, and it's a beautiful park down here. It has a playscape. Um, we're right on the marina, right behind me is the SS Badger. Uh, just a great place to be. Now, they call it the Sculpture Park because they have different sculptures down here, and right behind me is what you're seeing now. And this one's kind of funny because uh, it, uh, you can see the railroad tracks down here, and this is a, a lady that's waiting for a train coming from Flint. The tracks have finally been laid all the way to Ludington, and she's on her way to Ludington for her vacation. And also, it was big in the logging industry, so there were people coming here all the time. So they put this railroad in, and... That's what the sculpture is all about. We're going to see various other ones too that'll tell other stories. One of the favorites in the park is Follow the Leader. Five children and a dog playing Follow the Leader across stepping stones. The empty stones encourage a real person to get into the game. Be sure to have your camera ready or post a picture to your Facebook page of your child having the time of his or her life playing with his new friends. Memories of Ludington's early days when lumbering and sawmills were the main source of revenue are depicted in the Ludington's Lumbering Air sculpture. It portrays a horse pulling logs. The 12 foot tall bronze replica of a car ferry, the Car Ferries of Ludington, signifies one of the most recognizable and beloved sites in Ludington. The SS Badger Car Ferry still sails out of Ludington's port and travels across Lake Michigan to Wisconsin every May to October. The first sculpture to grace the waterfront was the Spirit of Ludington. Overlooking the harbor, this depicts a weathered captain at his ship's wheel and is dedicated to Charles Conrad. This sculpture pays tribute to those who have sailed on Lake Michigan. Also Reflections, a sculpture welcoming recreational boaters with an abstract 17-foot tall stainless steel sail. It symbolizes a time when lumber was carried by schooners from Ludington to other Great Lakes ports. Fruits of Farming is a sculpture of a man, woman, and child along with a sack of grain, representative of Mason County's rich farming heritage. All the sculptures are fascinating to look at, and each one tells a story that relates to Ludington's rich history. Various artists created the pieces that fit with the natural beauty of the park. While admiring the sculptures, enjoy all that the waterfront offers, such as a playground, amphitheater, two marinas, and a scenic walkway with benches. Give us a tweet at greatgetaways.tv and let our followers know what your favorite sculpture is. The nine sculptures in the park and the six others located throughout Ludington make up the Mason County Sculpture Trail. If diamonds are a girl's best friend, then Ludington is a traveler's best destination. It literally shines like a jewel. Every minute of your visit is worth its weight in gold. We certainly enjoyed our pure Ludington coastal getaway. There was fun for the whole family, beaches, and best of the community of friendly faces. We hope we have created some memorable moments for you. We invite you to visit our website for links to the Ludington Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Be sure to check out our photo gallery and clips of the show. 
It's anchors away for us now as we set sail for our next great getaway. <laughs>